know there's this testing and validation mini summit. I'll just quickly run through the schedule of uh, events for the week. Obviously, this morning we've got uh, the Lava introduction and update, an overview of what Lava is, what it can do, and what the new stuff is, and what cool stuff coming up. Um, this afternoon, uh, we've got the Lava Lab deployment workshop. Until if he gets here, and James are going to be running. Uh, tomorrow, we've got the test and validation summit itself. How do we better test our engineering? We want to get input for everybody, so please, if you can, come to that. Uh, the more, the merrier. Um, on Wednesday afternoon, we're just going to be in the hacking rooms. And if you want to come along and talk to us, that's the place to, to grab us. Uh, Thursday, we've got a session um, on multi-node testing. Uh, and that's been put together by Antonio, Neil, Sentil, James, and Fu Wei. Uh, we've also got uh, Tyler giving an advanced Lava Lab configuration present, uh, presentation, show and tell. Uh, really very useful if you're wanting to deploy a full Lava Lab. And then uh, Thursday afternoon, we've got some training, adding third party boards into Lava. Uh, how do you do it? What are the stumbling blocks? What are the things you need to think about? And on Friday, we've got an infrastructure update. Uh, a Lava multi-node testing LNG use case get together. So to find out what the use case is from the LNG are for multi-node testing. And on Friday afternoon, we have got a cool set of demos. Okay, so so uh, this is an introduction to Lava. That's me. It's put put together by uh, myself and uh, Milo. Uh, I'm, I've been with Linaro for. Uh, two and a uh, <laughs> half years now. Um, I came from ARM, from the Fast Models Division, and it's been a blast. It really has. It's a great ride. Any systems people, we've got kernel people work on kernels. We've got information systems, integration and test. The whole, whole wide thing. We're at approximately thirteen members. I think is it actually thirteen other <coughs> ish? Yeah. Let's say it's fourteen, so it's not unlucky, right? Um, we cover eight time zones and ten different countries. And I, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to leave this one on here. Our team motto: It isn't really. It's just a bit of fun. The only place in the world where lava is cool. So, what is it? Linaro, lava stands for the Lunaro Automated Validation Architecture. It's a framework that allows you to submit tests onto ARM hardware. It accepts jobs um, to, to. We don't define what you do. You just you, you, we give you a framework for you to submit jobs, run tests, gather the results, look at the results, compare the results watch trending of benchmarking, that sort of thing. So it produces these result bundles, and we can generate reports which can take those bundles and look at trends over time. But it's a black box to continuous integration, right? From the outside world, all devices, whether they're a fast model, uh, a, a sort of advanced Versatile Express TC2, or uh, a BeagleBone, they all appear to the outside world with the same interface. So you don't have to worry about the fact that they're very different in the, in the way we have to drive them. Um, so it's, it is a sort of cloud-like solution for ARM-based devices. Uh, so I keep saying this. Lava itself is an enabler. We don't define, we don't actually force what you run. But in the future, we're going to be providing a... a a service that will help you get the right sort of tests and the right sort of um, views into the results of those tests. We, now that we're such a, a we're a stronger team, we're a bigger team, we can start to consider that. When we were like four people, that was less of a, an opportunity. So, why have Lava? Originally, the whole point of Lava was the, the lab in Cambridge, which I look after. Um, 
and it's to validate the Naro engineering output. All the stuff that's going on all the time across the graph graphics working groups, the kernel working groups, uh, tool chain, we need to validate it. And so there's a continuous set of jobs going through uh, onto various different boards. We have, I'll, I'll show you a small inventory uh, later, and it, the inventory which I updated a week ago is now out of date again because there's been a couple more devices. Um, so we support automated kernel testing. One of the key things in testing is if a device gets bricked completely, what do you do? How do you get it back into a known state? There are a number of solutions to that. First of all, um, we uh, basically everything has a software controllable power on it. So we can power cycle a board. And in the case of boards like uh, the Beagle, the Panda, the Snowball, they, we have a, master, a known good master image. I'm just going to walk over here for a second because I left something that I need to show you. Um, they have a known good master image that you can boot back into. We then deploy onto another couple of partitions and reboot. Intercept the boot and boot up the test test uh, image and then start running the tests you define. Now that's all very well, but the one thing you haven't done is tested the boot mode. Um, that's not the case in some other devices like um, on TC2. Now we can actually reflash the, the the kernel. Sorry, reflash the the firmware so we can boot up into different. Things are tested. Master, how can we brick a board and get it back without having to do that master image thing? How can we test the bootloader? And you don't want to do chaining of bootloaders because you you might have interfered with the state. So that's when two years ago we thought, great idea, have a something that we can talk to the SD card on one side from the host and then also be connected to the board. So we, we called it the SD MUX. And we've gone through various attempts, iterations. Um, Vincenzo knows something about the, the uh, earlier. And then at Connect in Hong Kong, uh, you saw Joe mention this. This is the same stack that Joe was holding up. Um, Andy Green turned up with of this is an SD MUX. It actually fakes looking like an SD card that you plug into the device, and then we can talk to it from the host. <coughs> now we can write images and test them. So we finally got to the point after you know a lot of uh, trial and tribulation, that, uh, where we can actually test boot motors on any device. So, <clears throat> so, as I say, you can submit jobs that will run on a selected device with a user select combination of kernel and system image, whether it's Ubuntu, or open embedded, Android, that's kind of irrelevant. We're trying to be as much of a black box as possible. Comes from, you know, we, they can come from snapshots, .linaro.org, releases .linaro.org. <coughs> and then <coughs> once it's booted into the test image, it runs user-selected user uh, and defined tasks on that image. Now, I should point out that I, 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 we don't actually say that they have to be tests. They're just something to do, do some work. It could be that you're going to compile a tool chain something like that. That's completely fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, so it's not, although the purpose of Lava in the first instance is for validation and testing, there are other things you can do with it. Sorry? Not at the moment. 
Uh, could, uh, we'll, we'll have a Q&A at the end, and uh, I'll, I'll address some of that, okay? Sorry. Um, so, sorry? Yes, we're about to land a change that allows you to do that. So you actually book, you submit a job which is a live session, and when a board becomes available, you hand that board and you're in an interactive session. So the typical workflow of a job, you submit the job, which is defined, the, the, the outline of what you want to do is defined in JSON, and it can reference a separate definition in YAML, which actually can, pretty much you can then say anything you want. You can just run shell commands, you can do all that sort of stuff. So the front end checks that the job is valid, i.e. that the board type you've asked for exists, that the things you've asked it to do are valid things to ask the lab to do, like deploy an image, boot an image, test on that image. It then gets passed through to the scheduler, which uh, sits there and waits for the appropriate resource. Now, so let's say you've submitted for um, a Nexus 4. We have a Nexus 4 in the lab. Then, <coughs> When the Nexus 4 comes available, it's there. Now, say we had, uh, as we do with the, with the pandas, um, some of the pandas have USB flash drives, so people can run tests that involve USB flash drives. So that's a capability. So you actually put a device tag, say you want to run on a panda with a USB flash drive, and it goes and finds the appropriate resource when it comes available. It, hands, it fires up what's called a dispatcher, the Lava dispatcher, which basically then interacts with the board following the commands in the JSON file, just saying, so it boots up into the master image if we're doing a master image, or just uh, it actually, if it's using the SD bucks, it, the board is powered down. We then deploy the test image, we install the tests on that test image, and then we boot it. And then we run the tests. And then we submit the results to a dashboard. You can see uh, what the, the sort of love dashboard looks like. This slide, this part here, this capture, was from November of last year when I did a similar presentation at ARM. And I can actually, if I, just for a moment. So, um, <laughs> okay, we won't do that. the net connection. Give me a second. Is anybody else connected to Lenora Connect? Apologies about this. 
put it on here. Sorry for the uh, brief interruption. So what I was going to show you was that this list is now significant or longer. This is, these are all the device types that we have in Lava. If you drill down through those, you go into the actual instances of the devices, and you can see the jobs that had run on them, what the results of those jobs were. It's significantly bigger. I'll come to the inventory in a minute. So. There are various manifestations of Lava. As I said, originally it was conceived just as a lab as a service in the, the, the Cambridge. But now we found lots of people, different companies, are actually using it. They've been taking it and installing it. In fact, Tyler, uh, our technical architect in the Lava team, worked for a company that did just that. We didn't even know they were doing it. They just downloaded it, installed it. Well, Tyler did <laughs> and uh, got it all running. And so we found various of our members' companies are in, uh, setting up instances in their uh, own offices. And <coughs> one of the things, I'm just going to make a stand on a little bit of a, a soapbox for a moment. Lava is open source, but that's what Linaro is about. We are an open source company. We've had a lot of problems with when people have made changes to their local stuff. And then we've moved along. They've pulled down the new lava, and their changes. And the next version, your stuff will still be in there and still be working. The other good thing about pushing changes up is you can say, oh, well, I'd like to merge, have this merged. We get to see it, and we get to be able to go, well, actually, we already do that, or there's a better way of doing that, that sort of thing. But ultimately, it means your functionality will get in there, so push your changes. Um, and there's Lava for developers. We've got a couple of people who actually have Lava instances running in their home, notably Alan and Tyler, who actually now are running jobs on each other's boards across two different states in America. Um, and Deployment is getting easier. I would say 18 months ago, there were all sorts of problems with trying to pick it up and understand it. There were little bits you had to do here, there, and everywhere. It's been improved with the um, development of Lava Deployment Tool, which will install a whole server for you and all the, the um, scheduler and dispatchers you need. And we've also got, uh, we're also actually trying to get it packaged now. Neil has uh, been working on that. So you'll actually be able to do apt get or yum install Lava, Lava server, whatever. And we're, we're close. It's not there yet, but we are close. So we are improving it. So <coughs> I don't, people have seen various pictures of the lab over time, but we now have 75 devices online in one way or another it's because we have various different servers. We've got staging servers as well as production servers. Uh, I'm not going to read through the list. Uh, as I said, oh no, I did update it. I must have been asleep. So we've got two uh, Broadcom Capri boards in there and three Nexus 10s. Um, there is one rule. If you want to submit jobs and look at results, you have to be a member. You have to have a login on within Lava. Um, and so, yeah, there's lots and lots of devices in the lab. Uh, we're continually maintaining and uh, checking that nothing's broken. So we come to reliability. So it's very important if a test, if a job runs that, and it fails for some reason, that the reason it has failed is nothing to do with Lava itself and is, ever, or is more likely to be to do with the job. Now, about a year ago, so we introduced the idea of a health check about two years ago, a year and a half ago. So they get run 
once every 24 hours on each board. Not all at the same time, it is scattered across so we don't suddenly have a load on the land. And all those health checks do is they deploy a test image, they boot into the test image, uh, they'll deploy Ubuntu and then Android if that's appropriate, or just Android if that's appropriate. And boot into the, the test image, and if the board fails, that test, it's taken offline immediately, and then we go in and fix and find out why and we fix it. A year ago, our reliability was around 85%, which is not good. Not good at all. It meant that you really didn't know if a job failed, if it was lava or the job. We're now up to very close to 99%. I to get that over the 99%. And we're going to be discussing that this week, probably over a, a Guinness or three. So reliability is a lot better. So, uh, right. I've talked about the LFD, the multi-purpose probe. This allows you to do hot plug testing of Ethernet, SATA, level-shifted GPIO, audio, uh, HDMI, USB on the go, and of course there's the SD MUX at the bottom. We had a, uh, an engineer from Calzada come in a couple of weeks ago to help uh, upgrade one of our Calzada servers. And when I showed it to him, his quote was, that is the holy grail of automation. And I can't disagree. And when we saw this being presented by Andy over in Hong Kong, uh, we all came out of it with goosebumps. I was told I needed to get a life because I was so excited. But um, So we've got bootload testing. Um, Multi-node testing is landing at the moment. It's being worked on very actively by uh, Sent Hill, uh, Neil, and oh, Fu. Yes, of course. Sorry. Um, Multi-node was the hot topic for us. It suddenly came up the last connect. It, it solves so many problems. You can have multiple devices involved in a test. This is not just about ARM devices either, because x86 devices can be involved in the test as hosts. So if you think about when you're deploying, just a simple example, you're deploying Oh, right, and this is what you're doing. You've just put an image on there, and now you switch it over to uh, the device on the test mode and boot. Um, we've got LEG servers in the lab. We've got uh, two Calzada 96 node, <laughs> noisy, <laughs> but they are amazing pieces of kit. Um, and we're starting to get LNG. I've, ju I've just placed an order for some LNG support stuff, so that will go into the lab in the next four weeks. And <clears throat> lots of Lava helper tools are coming up. So things that will help you to write a test, things that will give you the framework of a test, help you through the whole process. So what's coming? Uh, so Lava is the sort of end of continuous integration. You've got all the stuff happening at this end, generating the images, the hardware packs, the filing systems or whatever. And the other, they then submit jobs, the automated process, to, um, to Lava. What we're looking at in the next sort of, it's not going to happen in the next cycle, but in the next year, let's say, is that we will be able, the whole thing will be drop it in one end of Lava and it comes out the other. What we're, our aim is that every time you commit, even on a, on a branch, your stuff will be checked. And of course, we got uh, rightly uh, so had some criticism leveled at us at uh, Hong Kong. Which we were submitting kernel stuff upstream, and it was fine on ARM, but it had broken x86. That's so it wouldn't get accepted. So this will enable us to, because we've got the whole idea of multi-node, you'll be able to do one job which checks both, you'll get an email back, and ultimately we won't even let you, we, a merge will not be possible until it's passed that test. So, uh, in conclusion, 
the usage of lava is growing massively. The interest in it has, has rocketed, I'd say, in the last nine months. And the lab is expanding. That's, <laughs> that's not actually what the lab looks like at like the moment. If it did, Matt and I would be <laughs> actually boiling hot by now. Um, but we, I, I can see within the next year to two years that we will have 30 racks of, uh, of stuff in there. And we're going to a distributed um, pattern over that time, so we'll be able to have not just one lava lab, but lava labs in different countries that all controlled so that you submit to a, a controller in the cloud, and then that has the scheduler, which goes and finds appropriate resource somewhere in the world. Uh, which is all, and all of this stuff is so incredibly exciting. I, mean, I think we all came away from the last connector, it's sort of like just buzzing. I feel it's going to be even better. So, just to wrap up, I generated an animation. Um, this is actually uh, the first one of this was done about a year and a half ago. Uh, and it shows the usage of lava over time. Uh, I'll explain it when it comes up. So, it's really difficult to do backwards. Okay, so this is from the Go Live Day of July of 2011. You can see we've got two board types. That's, pa that's panda boards and that's beagles. That's the instances of those panda boards. That's the instances of those beagles. The numbers are the job IDs of the jobs you're running on. And these are the people or automated processes submitting. I actually wanted to run the Star Wars theme behind this, but <coughs> I was told I couldn't for copyright reasons. Um, so you can see. We've now added origins and stovals. We're now into December of 2011. You'll see it actually runs to the state of the database at 4.30 last night. So but, uh, it's fairly good. And you'll see how massively the lab has grown over that time. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, any questions? LMP supports USB 3.0. Sorry? Uh, does the LMP supports USB 3.0 interfaces? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so the LMP is uh, controlled through a serial interface, uh, USB serial, and it's a very elegant. Uh, it's a Cortex M0 processor. You just flash the firmware, and that's it. You just talk to it through this nice JSON serial interface, control it to to flip it, to pass through, to cut off that sort of thing. And you can do that quite rapidly. So you could actually test how well something's going to react to a, a disk drive suddenly going going offline, then back online, and that sort of yeah, kernel, how the kernel manages it. I have another question. So besides uh, controlling the you know, the device under test, uh, what test equipment do you have drivers for? I'm sorry, I can't, my hearing is... What, what, which test equipment do you have drivers for? Besides, besides the device under test, which test equipment, like, I don't know, oscilloscopes, multimeters? Oh, right, okay, other test equipment in the lab, right, okay. Um, that, that is automated by Lava. Right, well, we have um, the NI battery simulator, which allows you to profile the performance against voltage, so we can actually you know, modify the voltage to profile it. We have audio out testing. That will improve massively with the audio on the LMP. Um, we have an ARM energy probe connected for measuring, measuring energy performance of an individual board. Um, until we got multi-node completed, the ability to control telling it to do things. Now that multi-node is 
is, is almost here. We're, we're very, very close. It's actually running on multinode.validation.denaro.org. Um, then we will be able to consider that sort of external equipment as being part of the test equipment. So it's coming. It could be really anything. So the previous employer that I worked at, we used uh, it to control signal attenuators for tests. So what we would do is we'd set up a signal attenuator one way, we'd run our tests, and then we'd set it up a different way and run that same test again. Um, so just because it's not supported in our validation lab doesn't mean it's not possible. I, I have a, a it's an AR drone quadcopter, and it uses Telma, it's a Linux kernel, right? And I can actually use Lava to make that quadcopter fly around. So you can control pretty much any external device if you have a, a console session into it, or if you have some way of controlling that externally, like you're sitting at your desk. I mean, at the end of the day, it's software, so everything is possible. I'm talking about the back is currently supported by, you know, what the items are useful by the company. Yeah, so. so have the right, right, and I think the list that Dave gave, gave was, a, was a good list. Um, so is, is there a list somewhere in the lab Wiki or like mentions which things are supported? Uh, a list of the devices, the, 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 the stuff, the external drives. The external drives. Uh, no, <laughs> there isn't. There probably should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have another question. I don't know if this is going to be probably mentioned in you know, future. Um, sessions. Uh, how is the mapping from a physical device to you know, uh, software abstraction done today in, in Lava? So like mapping from a, a physical device to like so when you start talking about multi-node tests, right? You might have two panda boards. You might have a multimeter. How is the mapping of, in software, somehow, when you write your test code, you need to refer to each piece of equipment using a... So it gets a job ID, and then each part of the test gets a sub-ID of that. So, uh, Neil, it's point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. Yeah. So, the way we are going to put Multinode into place is that you have a single submission, which defines all of the devices you're going to have in that group. After that point, all of the devices in that group have um, information about where those other devices are and what type of device they are, what role they're providing within the group. From that information, you can then get uh, ask for specific information from those devices, like uh, if one is running a database, you can say, well, what port do I connect to you, to you on? What, what's my connection status for that kind of... So those are test-specific um, pieces of data we need to disseminate around the boards. So we have a messaging API which um, will actually be able to ask for those questions, get the answers back, and pass them back to your process. So you will have a way of um, interrogating the group to get the information you need to say so that this board over here knows, say, an IP address or that board over there is part of the same group. This is right. Now I, I know that, that machine is, is this kind of role, and therefore I know I can run this test on it because I know um, that the, the test designer has put that information into the image or the test definition is running on that role. Sure, but how are you, you know, one thing is to connect the item quite easy, but another thing is when you register a device, do you also register the yeah, so as Dave said, we had tags. So what we do is we tag each device with tag that says this device has a USB hard drive or this device has a ARM power probe or so in your test submission, you, you, for instance, if you have uh, measuring power, you can say the device with the power measuring role has to be a tag of uh, Army Energy Pro or NI5 battery simulator. Okay, so when you register your test device, you mention the 
to add all these tabs and are these are you following like any connection for the tabs or <coughs> no this is just data in the database so uh, for the the Linaro lava installation is can be some name but it's it's not e really hard coded anywhere it's just a string yeah a tag name so we want to use the other so now I, I think we will have to come with a naming convention. How do we name? How do we identify all these? That's group specific. Yeah. So we can each, each group of people who use those types of questions can have their own different types. Sure, not some of the cloud that is really focused. Yeah, 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 but I'm going to say that we want to reuse the fact that that's case of the issue. Sure. We have to come up with And so the best way to do this, I think, is to look at what we have around the validation and then, you know, Whatever lava okay. lab you deployed, you look at that and say, okay, I see the tags they're using. Because what we don't want to do is take away the user's choice by saying, well, we're going to have this naming convention that everybody has to stick to. That isn't the, the whole idea of lava. It's just it's a generic interface. We give can you I, the option to, to add these strings in uh, and to. Can I suggest we, because we can take this offline and okay. do it in a hacking session, what else to do? Because uh, is, uh, I wanted to know if there's anybody else who's got any questions. Yeah. The. Uh, Stack board stack you're holding that allows you to get access to peripherals and that kind of stuff. Is that documentation, the design files and that kind of stuff available? No, we've not taken full time to hit all the proof. Okay. Is there intent to make that available? <clears throat> yes. But it's all proof production. I can't. Okay. And why can it not be as open as the software? Because what we don't want at the moment is people to go off and manufacture and come back to the server doesn't work. Isn't that as applicable as open open source software though? Is we don't want to release anything, make anything available until we're sure it's right? Right. Well <clears throat> we took a decision, rightly or wrong, to close it what well, we were doing because we didn't want to and this is the first manufacturing run, and there's still things we've checked. Yeah. You know. Any guess on when it'll become available? Uh, months, years? Oh, it's, it's more, more than the scope of months. Okay. And rough cost at this point for that? Farm cost. Farm cost. Yeah. So you're talking around 200 bucks for a stack. For a single board. Stack. Okay. It's a bottom test, not necessarily something that the NARA would sell. Right. So <clears throat> one other thing is, so this is all designed around automated testing right now. Um, but because of the diversity of hardware that's in the lab, one nice thing would be to say, can I request this board, as a kernel developer, can I request this board for temporary test of a kernel before I push this stuff upstream? I want to test this. I'm going to test it on my own boards, but there's boards in the lab that I don't have. I want to run a kernel <laughs> test on a board like that. I mean, is, the, is, there a, is there, I know that Lava potentially can do that already, but yeah. is there a plan for that to be like a formal process of how to share boards and that type of thing between uh, automated remotely. test and interactive remotely. use remotely? But, but, <laughs> but I'm controlling. So, yeah. you know, give me this board and give me a serial console and run this kernel, That's basically. Okay. okay. It comes back to you, it says, you know, what is available, it comes back to you, you can get a board, you know. Okay, terrific. Remember that at your house. Sure. Yeah, so it's the same kind of thing. But that's, that's landing in the main lobby. I find out this point, can the community, what's the job? Yeah, that's the next question. Can the community, not the members, the community, what's the job? That's the last thing. Yeah, since we have sensitive hardware in the lab, it's going to be, uh, there's going to be an ACL system for that. So a Panda board, yeah, I think that community can have access to that. Some of the member boards, obviously that's not something that they can do. Uh, that somebody from the community can access. Uh, so there will be ACL lists. Anybody with a Launchpad account that signs up will get basic access to the basic boards, Panda, Beagle, all the older platforms, but if there's specialized you know, fast models or something like that where you have to have a license, we can't offer that to the community. I mean, 
obviously there's restrictions there. So for the most part, most of our platforms, this won't be an issue, but some of the other platforms you'll have to be able to know our employee or a member to, to get that access. Uh, Dad, I have a question about the usage of the LLP. Um, do we already have a set of API to use MLP uh, features such like okay. uh, enable so, USB, enable Ethernet, disable USB, disable Ethernet? Well, I, have a te I have a test branch in Love Dispatcher which has an API for this. Oh, that's great. Um, it's not landed yet. We've got some more testing to do. Um, it, but basically, you will have action control over the LMP uh, from within okay. your job file. So I ask because I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, convert some manual test cases to the, uh, uh, which we can do uh, on the LMP board. And something maybe can uh, validate uh, from, uh, we just remove it from our manually testing list to this automation. Yeah, I mean, so there will be larva actions, and along with that, I've been thinking about this, uh, we need to also provide host actions, which are completely outside of larva, so you can actually run commands to do this from a, a multi mode okay. configuration. So. Okay. The answer is yes, we're going down that route. OK, that's great. Thank you. OK, anybody else? No? OK. Uh, so we have a testing validation summit, and l and will be brought up there. Um, I think, we'll, which if you're interested, come to our hacking sessions. I think we might be able to give you guys a demo uh, and show you how to use it. And, also, we broadcast live on air every Friday. Well, now on air, there's been an LMP demos, you know, for weeks kind of leading up to this. So, also check those out too. In fact, I did a broadcast two weeks ago from the manufacturer. <laughs> As the first boards came off, and I actually managed to get something working. So, okay, thanks everybody.